Happy birthday, Sheldon. Yeah. 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 Look at that. Okay. Happy birthday. Rabbi Nachman's birthday, also. Oh, yeah? yeah. You know that? It's Rabbi Nachman's birthday? <laughs> Shalom says he knew that. His sister told him. Okay. Today we're going to start on Mem on the base on the bottom of the Mishnah. I think Hashem that we're able to learn Torah every day. In this course of our learning, we should have the Bishim and the learning really Nishmas. Have a gold of Baspar Kinyamin, the final Zev. And it's in. And whoever needs to refer Shlema, Shabbat Shalom. Okay, yeah. it begins like this. Someone deposits a barrel by his friend to watch. And it's funny because the word habaylem, I would assume, was talking about the owner of the of the barrel. It turns out that it's really talking about the shamer. The shamer doesn't des- the, the watchman doesn't designate the place. How does it say it over there? Who's the owner? But the owner of the barrel doesn't own the guy's house. Shrink to the shamer. I guess I, I guess the way Rashi puts it is that the owner of the barrel didn't tell the shamer that I want to borrow that place for my barrel. Yeah, yeah. So he's not he's not um, um, whatever the case is. He's watching this. He's watching this barrel. This barrel of wine. But the exact location of where it is, is not, it was, has not been lent to the, um, to the uh, what's he called, the mafkid, the one that's depositing, the owner of the barrel. The exact location isn't, isn't, isn't lent to him. It's anywhere where he wants to keep it in his house is good. He didn't say that I'm lending you that closet. Okay. So the bailam, I guess, would go back on the and the owner of the barrel, because the owner of the barrel didn't say, lend me that closet or that corner. Okay, so what happens now is v'tiltalach. The shaymer moves the barrel, the nishtabra, and it breaks. If it broke while he was, while it was in his hand, so then it depends. If it's the tzarkai, if he was moving it because he wanted to do something with the barrel. It was for his own purposes. He wanted to reach something that was up high. He was going to stand on it. He was moving it over. So then he's going to be chayev. Then he's going to have to pay for it. Why does he have to pay for it if it's Aynas? The reason is, is because once he uses it, then he's shaleach yad. That's called um, mis- misappropriation of this, um, of this item. And then he becomes chayev. He becomes chayev even for Rhinus. But if it's Litzarkov, the reason why he was moving it was because the barrel uh, right where it was was a leak or something, and there was uh, he wanted to move it so it doesn't get ruined. So then, then he's going to be pater. Okay, that's talking about if it breaks while he's holding it. In Mishini, Chanishbra, if after he put it down, then it broke. It was leaking. Not the barrel was leaking. Broke. There's a leak on the barrel. Or maybe it was in the sun or something. He's moving it because he doesn't want it to, to get ruined. But once he puts it down, if once once he puts it down, it breaks. Then he's going to be pater. Only if it breaks while it's in his hand, then we're going to make this distinction. If uh, what was the reason why he was moving it? 
Now, the Gemara is going to explain, just to clarify, that we're talking about over here, Mishinich and Nishpah, that when he puts it down, <coughs> he puts it down, he's going to be Pater. That's because he returned it. We're going to be following the opinion of Leibin and Das Bailem, that you don't need to notify the owner after you, after you steal something. You don't need to notify him that you returned it. You just have to return it. You don't have to tell him. So the fact that he put it down means that he returned it. And now he goes back to his old status of being a regular Shimer. He's returned to the, to the, to the house of the Shimer. He's not a Ganav anymore. He returned it because he put it down. Now, the Gemara is going to explain that this is only because I leave you in the dark and we should just learn the Mishnah and then not explain it. And then the Gemara will go through all the problem. I think it's easier, I'll tell you. Then, then um, uh, the Gemara is going to explain the difference between Yichtel and Makim or Le Yichtel and Makim. If it has a, spe- a designated place or it doesn't have a designated place, as if it has a designated place, then it, until he returns it to the designated place, it's not returned. But if it doesn't have a designated place, then once he puts it down, he returned it. And that's why over here we're seeing this leniency. That once he puts it down, it's considered returned and he becomes Pater. Let's say the owner of the barrel said, I want to borrow that closet for my barrel. So there's a special place in the house for this barrel. So then, and then the, the shamer moved the barrel. It doesn't matter if it was while he was holding it, it broke, or after he put it down, it broke. But Tsarkai, if it was for the if he uh, was misappropriating, he was using it for his own personal needs. So then he's Chayev and Litzarka. But if it was because there was a problem in the closet, he needed to clear it out because there was a leak in there or something and he wanted the barrel to get ruined, and then he's gonna be putter. Then there wasn't he wasn't sure Leah Yad. He wasn't misappropriating the uh this. okay. The Gemara starts off with Hamani. Who is the author of our Mishnah that says that once you put the barrel down, you're going to be potter, even though you made of you might have used it for your own needs. But when you put it down, you're potter. The Gemara says that's the opinion of Rabbi Shmuel. He damer leibin and das bailem. It's the opinion of Rabbi Shmuel that holds that you don't need to notify the owner when you're returning a stolen object. The Tanya was taught in a brisa. A grain of kalemanayder. If someone steals a sheep from the flock, a selim and a kisser, he steals a coin from a wallet. Lemakim shaganav yachser. You just put it back in the place where you took it from. That's the Rabbi Shmuel. That's the words of Rabbi Shmuel. Rabbi Kiva, Rabbi Kiva says, Tarech das bailem. Tarech das bailem. Kiva says that you have to notify the owner. And if you didn't notify the owner, then you're still responsible because that's not considered a good returning. Until the owner is notified that you returned it, possibly even took it and returned it. So then, um, then, uh, it's not, it's not counted, right? Okay. The Gemara asks now, if that's the case, if that's the case, that you can return it without notifying the owner. So then why does the Mishnah say, where he did not designate a place? What does it have to do with the designating a place or not? The Gemara doesn't. Didn't, doesn't have yet the answer that you're not returning it to the right place yet. Gemara says, "My area la yichdu. I feel yichdu nami. Even if he designated a place, the same halacha would apply. If he designated a place. Once you return it, you then you're uh, then you should be pater, even if you don't notify the owner." Gemara says, "Loy mi baikama." Gemara says, "Actually, you're looking at it the wrong way. Mm-hmm. It's exactly the opposite." Not only if he designated a place that when he returns it, he's returning it to the right place. But even if he did not designate a place, that when he puts it down, he's not returning it to its right place. How do you know what he's, if he's returning it? He's not going to hold it all day. He just put it down. If he put it back in its right place, then good. But if he just put it down, how do you know he's really returning it? What it means is, is that it's all up to in his mind. If he's putting it down wherever it is, 
That's automatic that it's considered returning, even if it's no, there's no designated place. The, there's a chiddush here. The chiddush is not only if there's no designated place. Chiddush is, is even if there's no designated place, it's still considered returning. I mean, doesn't it depend on which, uh, which type of Yeah, it would uh, depend. We're talking about it's in his rishas. Rishas of the shame. It's like if he picks it up, or puts it in his kitchen and sleeps in the right. And if he would just remove the location of the door, it's not sure. If he moves the barrel, it would depend. If he moved it for. He moves it for his own purpose or for the barrel's purpose. For what if one intention is he moving it? Right. The right. owner gave it him to watch. Then he moved it because of one of two reasons: either because he wanted to steal it, or he wanted to use it, or he moved it because it was getting ruined in the place where it was. If it was in order to protect it, so then he's, he's a regular shaymer, unless he was a shaymer chinim. So he's still a shaymer chinim. Only negligence would make him chayim. But if he was a, um, but if he moved it, because he's misappropriating, he's using it for himself, then he's going to be chayim even on Aynas, even if it's an unpreventable what if, circumstance. What if someone invites you in just to use like their, their hand soap? Uh, it breaks. That doesn't necessarily break, but you're not a ghana that you use like that. It's like it's you're in the house. Hero, you yeah. Know, it's, it's yeah, yeah, that's the that's the, the, the man. Yeah, that's not a problem. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. We're holding now Ima Seifa. Let's read further in the Mishnah. Mishnah says, If, good morning, if you, uh, if you, if you did designate a place, the owner said, I'm borrowing that, that corner, that closet, because I'm uh, depositing a barrel by you. So I want that closet designated. So then the shimer moves the barrel. So if it's for his own purpose, then he's chayev. Even after he puts it down, he's going to be chayev. And if it's litzarka, if it was for his the purpose of the barrel, then he's going to be pater. But apparently, when you put it down, if you put it down, you're still chayev. Obviously, you need to inform the owner in order to give it back. Why is he still chayev after you put it down? It must be that he didn't inform, that because he didn't inform the owner, and it's not considered he returned it. It's still considered a ganav. So you ganav you chayev on everything. A ganav can't say, oh, it was an inus. Right? I can't hear it, I'm not talking. I'm talking to myself. I said yes. Yeah. <laughs> I say that because I once accidentally stole a car and didn't know it. It started with with uh, without the right key? So I was working in a gas station as a teenager. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And somebody mm -hmm. said, gave, came in and gave us a key and said, I'm going to be gone today. Would you go pick up my car and come and insert, bring it in and service it? Uh -huh. And I went and started a 56 Chevy and drove it in and we serviced it. And he calls up later and said, when are you going to get my car? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the key fit the wrong car. Yeah, I guess in the back then it happened. Yeah. So uh, I took it back, and um, uh, believe me, I did not inform the true owner. <laughs> <laughs> he got free service. It's a big mitzvah. I thought about giving him. Bob Cully, was it a convertible or not? <laughs> it was a '56 Chevy, Randy. <laughs> Yeah, 56 Chevy convertible or not? No, no, it was sedan. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> the professor wants to know who paid for the service for the um, 
you know, the oil and all that, all that stuff. I was lucky it didn't come out of my wages. <laughs> really, the, uh, the gas station paid. I'm just saying that was a case where I took something without intent. That's why I was right. kind of. Right. You took it out of wages. I, I guess it's not theft then. Take it out. I guess yeah. the answer is it wasn't theft. It's something, but not theft. I had no intention to take and keep. Right. Right. We're going to, it's going to come up a drop, some, uh, something similar to that. But, um, Yeah, the the question on that on your story would be how responsible you were to make sure that you had the right car. You know, that would be uh... okay. So here, what we're left with is um, reminding me of uh, Shlomo Kalbach. He said uh, when he um, he worked for the for the Rebbe, you know, so he complained that they didn't pay him anything. So um, he said that at night he didn't he didn't even have where to sleep. So he would open up a car and he would, in the parking lot, he would just go just sit in there. He would leave in the morning. But um, sometimes the guy would come early in the morning and wow. he would say, hey, what are you doing in my car? He says, this is crazy. It looks exactly like my car. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Very common that a key opens with multiple vehicles. Not, not, not now, but now we're back then. I think, I think we had two cars so that we use the same key or something. I think we had that years ago. It wasn't as uh, specific. I've heard stories of people opening different cars because before the car door, the, um, the key to open the door was different from the start. Was a different key. Oh. I've heard of stories of people that opening different cars and they noticed. But not starting. Yeah. So what's what's happening now is that even after you return it, you're still chayev according to the second half of the Mishnah. Even after you return it, why 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 should you be chayev after you return it after you put it back down? Also, the Rabbi Akiva must follow the opinion of Rabbi Akiva that the Amak that he says bin and that you have to notify the owner. What's, what what we're really pointing out over here is that. The first half of the mission that said once you once you put it down, you're exempt. The second half of the mission that says once you put it down, it, even if you put it down, you're still not exempt. So it's uh, going to be a machlekes, Rabbi Shmuel and Rabbi Kiva. The, the mission is going to be divided between um, between the first half being the opinion of Rabbi Shmuel, where you don't need to notify the owner. The second half of the mission would be the opinion of Rabbi Akiva. But before we do that, the Gemara says, one second. Rabbi Akiva, if it is the opinion of Rabbi Akiva, my year yichtu, I feel la yichtu nami. Then why only if it's a designated uh, place for this barrel is he going to be chayiv after he puts it down? Even if there is no designated place place for the barrel, he should also be chayiv. The Gemara says, "Let me buy kamer." No, you're taking it wrong. You have to look at it the opposite way. It's not loy me buy la yichtu the lav mekaymo. Not only if there's no designated place that when you return it. You're not really returning it because where are you putting it down? You're putting it down just in your house. There's no designated place for this. How do you know you're really returning it? But even if you return it to the designated place, so the imam is returning it. But nevertheless, Rabbi Akiva holds being in the spile, and that's why you're still high. The Gemara is learning over here, the Mishnah, that when you put it back, when you put it down, it's talking about you put it back in its designated place, and you're still high. The ratio of Rabbi Shmuel was safer Rabbi Akiva comes out. The first half of the mission is the opinion of Rabbi Shmuel, but you don't need to notify the owner. The second half of the mission is you do need to notify the owner, and that's the opinion of Rabbi Akiva. It's a problem. The Gemara says you're right in. Dam Rabbi Yechonam because Rabbi Yechonam made a statement. Man de metargam li chavis. Anyone that will explain the mission of chavis of the barrel, Ali be the chadtana according to one, um, according to one opinion. Which is very difficult because it's really it looks like there's a machlekas there. Rabbi Shmuel and Rabbi Kiva, Mavlana Mani Basri Lebei Misutal carry his clothing after him to the bathhouse, which is something that a student would do for a teacher, would carry the the clothing, so uh, like a servant. So um, what he's saying is that uh, anyone that can explain this to me, I'll consider him my teacher. Mm. <coughs> okay. Tirgama Rabbi Yaakov Baraba Kamid Rav Shenat Lamanas Lugaisla. Rabbi Yaakov Bar Abba 
says in the name, of, uh, not in the name, explained it in front of Rav, that we're talking about over here that he took it. I'll explain it in a minute, all the details, because there's going to be three opinions here. They're all basically saying a similar, um, similar thing. The same, uh, the same point that he took it with intention to steal it. Rav Nassim Bar Abba Kamei Rav Shnatla Manas Lashleich Bayad. Rav Nassim Bar Abba says he took it with intention to to um, to use it, not to steal it, just to misappropriate its use its usage. Now, for my Kamei why do I need? Why do, if we didn't get to the main point yet? Um, to steal some of it is the way Taisus learns that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a discussion what Shlicha Siad means, but let's let, before we get into that, let's take a look at this. Talk about the, the there's no permission to use it. And the, and the idea over here is one second before we get into what's what's happening, just why do we have two opinions here? One saying Lagaisla one says uh, to steal it, one says to misappropriate its usage. Uh but uh, Mike what are they arguing about? This is Rab Yaakov Baraba and Rab Nasan Baraba, maybe they're brothers. Yaakov and Nasan. Um they're saying it in front of Rav, students of Rav. There's a discussion. If if you misappropriate the usage of something that you're watching, is that only considered misappropriation if you cause a, uh, a loss in it? Or if you just, let's say you just use it as a step still, you didn't cause any loss, right? You decided to put your books on it, to hold it, use it as a stender. So you're using it, which you don't have any permission to use, but you didn't cause any loss. Manda Malagaisla, the one that says that it's to steal because because he holds that if you're going to be misappropriating the usage, that's because then then you would need to have a loss. And over here, you didn't make a loss, at least not on purpose, right? It broke afterwards, but you didn't you didn't you weren't taking from it. You weren't okay. And Manda Malagaisla, the one that says that because he says that I didn't explain exactly how we answer the question. We'll get, we'll get to that in a moment. Um, but the other opinion holds that does not need a loss, and therefore it could be it could be misappropriate misappropriation. It means you're using something that was meant to you were meant to be watching it, and you're using it for your personal use. Okay. The question is whether it. Um... In Reb Naftali's case, he, he gets the car to um, to service, but he decides to take it to the, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, for a ride right. somewhere. You know, it's, all right. It's it, 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 if there's a convertible, also, you know, we can understand it better. <laughs> but he has to cause a loss. That's so that's a machlekes. But that's a... causes a gain to it. Oh, does, does, does he get rewarded for having stolen? I don't think it. I don't think it would matter if, according to the opinion that says it doesn't matter if there's a loss. Once you use it, it's a problem. Once it once you to... use it, it goes under your. Uh, you become responsible even for unpreventable circumstances. If it results in a in an increase in gain, like you fertilized it, right? You change the oil. He doesn't get right. points for that, right? You can only lose, right? Maskifler of Sheshes. Rav Sheshes has a, a question on this. We, we still we didn't explain the answer yet, but we'll get to that after after Rav Sheshes. Maskifler of Sheshes. Rav Sheshes has a question. Midi not lakatani. Does it say that he took it, which would which would uh, represent stealing or misappropriation? It doesn't even say that. Tilt lakatani. It just says that he moved it. Alam Rav Sheshes. Rav Sheshes achem askim gan shetilt lalavi ala goislas. He moved it. How do they translate guysless? Put on it birds. Oh, well. Some birds. Um, He's using it as a like a, a step ladder. Young birds from so, yeah, yeah, but guysless is uh, are like young birds, fledglings. Um. Oh yeah. Oh, from a from a dovka from the uh, birdhouse. Okay, so now here's where here's where we get some explanation here. Kasavar he holds shayol shlemidas gaslan havi. Really, uh, what's happening is he's moving it 
but he's using it for his own purpose and he's borrowing it. And that makes him into a goslin. So he's either, according to Reb Yaakov Baraba, he's either t- t- stealing it or he is shlichus yad, according to Reb Nassim Baraba. According to Reb Sheshis, he's just borrowing it. Right? There was no intention to steal. He's just borrowing it. And, but that's considered a goslin. Okay, so he's a goslin. But cooler Rabbi Shmali. Now we, here we get the explanation. Really, the entire mission is the opinion of Rabbi Shmal that says when you return it, you don't need to inform the owner. One second. So why in the second case, when he returns it, is it not considered return? It says, That's, This is the main point of the whole of the whole answer. Talking about over here, when there was a designated place, even though when you, even when you return it, it's not considered return. That's because you didn't return it to the designated place. You put it in. You put it down somewhere. You weren't holding it, but it wasn't back in the original place, so it's not considered return. So the difference in the Mishnah between the first case and the second case is the first case, wherever you, whenever you put it down, it's considered return because there was no designated place. The second case of the Mishnah, the Seifa of the Mishnah. Since the, they designated a location for this item, so until you return it to that designated location, it's not considered returned. But you don't have to notify the owner. That wasn't our issue here. It wasn't our issue? Wasn't a Rabbi Akiva opinion? Our issue over here was that we're all following Rabbi Shmal, the whole Mishnah. But you don't need to des- the, to notify the owner that you're returning it. It's just you have to put it back. You didn't put it back. Okay. Rabbi Yechanan, why did Rabbi Yechanan say, "Oh, it's impossible to"? To figure this mission out, uh, according to just one opinion, we just figured it out. It says hinicha bim kaima mashma. Rabbi Yechonah understood that it says when he puts it down, it doesn't mean that he just puts it down. It means that he puts it back in its place. Mm-hmm. So you're putting it back in its place, then we have no explanation for for why it's not considered returned according to Rabbi Yishmael. We only that we can only explain that according to Rabbi Akiva that says you need to notify the owner. Okay. <coughs> now, itmar. We have a, uh, a statement, a machlekes between two Amirayim. It says, Rav and Levi. Machlekes between Rav and Levi. Levi is a, uh, a student of Rebbe as well. And Rav and Levi, they, we have machlekes between Rav and Levi in other places. Um, Chadamar, one of them says, whenever it says Chadamar, we don't really know who says what, and the Gemara is going to try to figure that out. One of them says, Shlichus Yad that misappropriation of a item that you're meant to be watching is only considered misappropriation if you, in other words, it changes the status of the watchman once he does that. But that would only work. That would that would only change the status. That now he's responsible. You know, let's say he's a shemachinim, he's an unpaid watchman, so he's not responsible to get stolen or lost. Or definitely unpreventable circumstances. Potter. But once he misappropriates it, then he's chayiv on everything, yeah. even on einus. So when does that, when is it considered misappropriation? One opinion says only if you made a loss in it, if you took some of the wine, right? Started to use it. Kharam or one of them says, that no, even if you use it and you didn't have any loss, you use it just to get the, you know, to stand on it or something. Yeah, that's what we were learning according to Rabbi Yishmael because he's returned it. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, to stay him, let it be settled. The Rav who damer shlichus yadin and shlichus sarn. You see, we have an machlek because you're Rav and Levi, but we don't know who holds what. So let us prove that Rav is the one that holds shlichus yad. It's considered you consider shlichus yad even if you didn't cause any loss to the item. The Tanya was taught in a brisa. It's going to take us down towards the bottom of the page till we see what Rav's opinion is about this. But the brisa says that Raya Shay Raya Adri. It was a shepherd. He was taking his sheep out, his, his flock out. Uh, he left his flock and he came to the city. Now, the Gemara is not going to discuss that he was a negligent about this. The Gemara is assuming that it was perfectly fine for him to do that. However, 
Bari Vidaras, is a, uh, a wolf comes and grabs one of the sheep, Taraf, tears it up. It's talking about where it takes it back to its, um, what, what are they called? Where are they called? Uh, not, not a cave, cove. Takes it back to its hiding place. And um, then, yeah. Yeah. Is, that, is that for uh, lions? Okay. Um, uh, or a lion comes and tears it up. A lion doesn't have to take it back anyway. It can eat it up on the spot. And uh, so he's putter. But let's say the shamer, the um, shepherd, had put his staff. And what is Tamil like? His bag, his backpack, on top of it, oh, his satchel. pouch, satchel. Uh, so then he's going to be chayev. So the Gemara asks on this, on this price of Avinamba, we deliberated on this. Because he put it on, he's chayev. He took it off. Or did you put it on once, you chayev, you take it off. If you follow the opinion of Rabbi Shmal, then once you uh, put anything back to its original location, or you stop using it, you don't have to no notify the owner. It's automatically returned, and now you become back a shamer. Amar Rav Nachman, Amar Rav Baravu, Amar Rav. Rav Nachman says the name of his father-in-law. said the name of Rav. But not allow. We're talking about <coughs> while the staff and the satchel is still on it, he's still using it. So then he's going to. That's considered slichas yad. But so what? He never acquired it. <coughs> You know, Shlichasyad meant that you needed to acquire it. Apparently, you do. There's some big notes on Shlichasyad. Yeah. It's complicated, this uh, Shlichasyad, because apparently you have to. Let's see. Um, okay, uh, let's say shlichus yad means that you have to actually take it. You, have, you want you're, you're intending to keep it. That's shlichus yad. The question is what we're saying over here. Um, but one second, shlichus yad tzrich chesar and ain't tzrich chesar. That means did you actually um, did you actually start start using it already? That's the question. If you intend to keep it but you didn't start using it. So then, that's the machlekes over here. In the case where he put now his satchel or whatever and, and his staff on the sheep, wasn't he immobilizing the sheep and maybe that's why that sheep got attacked by the wolf and that's why he was just uh -huh. Looking at I didn't, I didn't understand angle. it like that, but okay. Then it talks about a regular place. I mean, regular place includes the whole opposition. Right. Right. A regular theft, Phil was explaining. A regular theft means that you're you're taking the whole the uh, entire item. is you're taking part of the item. That's uh but the only thing is that now our discussion is do you have to actually start using it to start causing the loss for so over here, um, but you didn't uh, you didn't make a Kenyan in it. Amarav Shmol Barav another statement in the name of Rav. He hit it with a stick. He, he, he made it run. Okay. He made it run. So um, so that's considered shlichus. Yeah, that's considered a Kenyan. So the Holy Chasra, but he didn't cause any loss. And we had a machlaikas of shlichus yad is, a, is considered shlichus yad. Misappropriation is if there's a loss. Obviously, Rav must hold that you don't need to cause a loss. It's already shlichus yad. That's why he's chayiv. Okay, so we have a proof that what Rab's opinion is. Mar says one second. How do you know that what it means is that he made it walk? Yeah. Or run with the stick. Maybe it means that he he uh, weakened it with a stick. Right. They can me. I'll prove it to you. Diktani shehi kisha because he said that he hit it with a stick. He, he didn't. Why a stick sounds like he hit it hard. So Shmami, no, we see over here that there is a loss. He weakened it with the stick. 
Okay, so if that's the case, then we just changed their whole opinion. This went very quick. But now Rav holds that Shlichus Yad is only with a loss. If that's the case, Mida Rav Savar Shlichus Yad Shlichus Chesar, that Shlichus Yad is with a loss. Levi Savar Shlichus Yad ain't a Shlichus Chesar. So Levi is the other opinion. Levi holds that it doesn't need a loss. Levi is much more strict over here. My time with the Levi, what's the reason for Levi? I'm Rabbi Yechon, Mishnah Rabbi Yesi ben Nairai. Rabbi Yechonan says that Levi is following the opinion of Rabbi Yesi ben Nairai. Mishunah Shlichas Yad Amr B'Shem Rishachim, Mishlichas Yad Amr B'Shem Rishachim. What he's saying now is that it says twice, you know, we have the, the in Parshas Mishpatim, we have the, the sections that talk about Shimon. The first section <coughs> of Watchmen. The first section is about the unpaid Watchmen. Second section is about the paid Watchmen. And the third one is about the borrower. So the first one talks about um, that he has to take an oath if he didn't uh, to make sure that he didn't do, that he didn't mis- misappropriate. The second paragraph says again, if he didn't misappropriate it, he's going to be exempt by those uh, unpreventable circumstances. By the Shemr Sacha. So what Rabbi Yaisi ben Neirai is saying, it didn't need to say it uh, by Shemr Sacha, uh, because we already know it from Shemr Chinam. Why is it saying it? It's just coming to teach me another halacha that Shlich Asiyad works. Shlich Asiyad, uh, will this misappropriation is going to be considered a misappropriation even if there's no loss. That's uh, how the Gemara is going to explain it shortly. Bani Aymen Rabbi Yechelen says, Eina Mishonah. That it's not, Mishnah means it's not um, like uh, abnormal, the fact that it says that. How do they translate in Mishnah? It's not different. Okay. My Mishnah. What are you talking about when you say it's not different? Okay, so it says like this. Uh, when no, what is uh, we're asking? What is uh, what's it called? Thank you. What does um, what did Rabbi Yisib ben Nairai mean when he said that it is different? We're going to go back to explain. It's not necessary to to for the Torah to tell me about shlichus yad by the paid watchman. The taste of Mishem Mechinim, and I'll understand it naturally from the fact that it says it by the Shem Mechinim. Mashem Mechinim Shapat Begneva Aveda. Whereas for a non-paid watchman, that he's exempt. If it's stolen or lost, however, shalach bayad is chayiv. But once he misappropriates it, he uses it for his, for his own purposes. Then he's chayiv on everything. Shem sachah is chayiv b'gnei v'veda. Shem sachah is chayiv on more than a shem mechinam is. A paid watchman is chayiv on more. So like Kolshkin, for sure he's going to be chayiv if he mis- misappropriates its mm-hmm. usage. So for sure he's going to be chayiv. He's anyways chayiv on more things. So this is he has more responsibility. But my hilchas are kasvin or rachmanus. So why did they just put it in the Torah? Second time, we would know it naturally. So it's lay malach. It's coming to tell you shlichus yad and it's It's coming to tell me an, an increase in liability here, and that is that if you have any misappropriation, even if there's no loss to the item, it's still considered misappropriation. It's chayiv even for einus automatically, even if there's no loss to the item. Vani Aimer and Rabbi Yechon and Argus and Rabbi Yesin have been there, right? And he says ain't a mishuna that it's not different. And the reason for that is Krabalazar, the Amar Davida Achasi. It's like Krabalazar that said that both this and this are the same. My Davida Achas, what do you mean they're the same? I'm talking about Shemachinim and Shemachar. It says Misham Dikla Mifrach, because you can't make the Kabachimer and say that if Shemachinim has Shlichus Yad and makes him more responsible, so for sure Shemachar is going to be more is going to be more responsible by Shlichus Yad because the Shemachinim may be stricter than a Shemachar. How is that possible? Just one halacha that a shemer chinam is stricter than a shemer sacher. Goes like this. Wow. How is that possible? Goes like this. Normally, right, right, right. Shalom's asking, how is it possible? Shemer shemer chinam should be stricter than a shemer sacher. So the answer is. That if a Shemachinim claims that it got stolen, so he's putter. If we find out that he actually has the item, then he has to pay double after an oath. 
Dama. Turns out that the Shemer Chinam pays double. Let's say the, the same story with the Shemer Sefer. That's right. That's right. Very good. But let's say the same story would happen with a he lied. That's what we're talking about. Let's say um, uh, Shemer Sacher would claim that it was stolen. So he would pay. How many times? He'd pay once. So it turns out Shemer Chinam ends up paying twice while Shemer Sacher only pays once. With the same story. Right? So um, so we see that Shemer Chinam is more strict, at least in this aspect, than Shemer Sacher. So you don't tell me a Kalvachayma that says that if a Shemer Chinam is high, if a sure Shemer Sacher, because maybe I wouldn't have known the Shemer Sacher would have been high of an Oynes with Shlich because a Shemer Sacher because a Shemer Chinam has a certain strictness that a Shemer Sacher doesn't have. Yeah, it's also it's a guilt offering. It's a man, the light parach, and Rabbi Yesi ben Nahirai uh, that didn't say this problem with the Kalvachimer. He says, Savar Karnabale Shva, Adifim Mikvela Mishva. says that paying the principal is much stricter than having to pay double after a note. The fact that you never can never get out of it, you know, automatically, okay, pay up, which that's the case by the Shemr Sacher, is automatically stricter. Okay. Basically, what we just did here is we explain the opinion of Levi according to Rabbi Yisib ben Neiroi. It says, that says that since there's an extra time in the Torah that it says Shlichus Yad, what's the extra time that it says about Yisham Sacher, which is not necessary? It's coming to tell me a special halacha that Shlichus Yad doesn't require a loss. Shlichus Yad even without a loss. Okay. Rav Amar, Rav says, Lay Tamar Shlichus Yad, Lay B'Shem Rechinam, Lay B'Shem Rechacher, B'Tesim Yishoyel. He says, I don't need a shem, I don't need Shlichus Yad at all. Rav has a very interesting logic over here. You have you got to see this. He says, I would know it automatically from a Shoyel. Ma Shoyel, Dol Das Bailam Kavit, Shalach Bayad is Chayev. Rav is saying like this. When someone borrows an item, so... He becomes responsible even if there's uh, unpreventable circumstances cause a, a loss to the item. Yeah, he becomes responsible. At what point does he become responsible? When he starts to use it. <coughs> so a shayel becomes chayev when he's shaleach yad. Now, you can't call that misappropriation. You call that appropriation or something. He's, oh. he's, he's using it for, the, for what he was uh, supposed to be using it for. But that, nevertheless, that makes him chayev. So anyone that does that type of thing, whether it's appropriate, appropriate or misappropriate, misappropriation, is going to be chayev. So I don't need to say shlichus yad at all, because if the all you have to tell me is the halachas of a shayel, and then I know that if it, that was a legal usage of the of someone else's item, a borrower, he legally used someone else, and, and automatically becomes chayev on oynas. He borrowed with permission. With permission. So if someone that borrows with permission is Chayav Ananas, it's, it's without permission for sure he's Chayav Ananas. Why? He never even had permission. So what? That's an, it's, it's, it's the opposite. Yeah, I don't think that's a problem. You borrow without permission and you're going to get it. That's right. I gave you permission to borrow it and to use it. You're taking it without permission. So why do you have the right to use it even? No, you don't have. But, but the and fact that, it. but if when you borrow it, once you use it, you're permission. obligated on all, even with permission. Okay. You're okay. obligated on all, on everything. So if you borrow, if you borrow it without permission, you for sure you're chayev. So if there's a if there's a watchman here that was not supposed to use the item and he uses the item, so if a shayel that uses the item and he has permission is chayev. So for sure the this watchman that wasn't supposed to use it at all, for sure should be chayev. That's Rabbi's logic. Ma shayel, take a look. Ma shayel de la das bailam kavit. He's doing it with permission. And Shalach Bayad, and he starts to use it, which is what he's supposed to be doing. He's Chayev for Aynas. So Shemichin and Shemich Sacher, like Koshkin, for sure, he'd be Chayev. I don't need to say Shlich Yad by the other Shem. Lama Nemar, so why was it said? Chada, so for two reasons. Well, I, I have two. One is Shemichin and one Shemich Sacher. One of them is to teach me, like Levi's opinion, that it's considered Shlich Yad even if there's no loss to the item. The other opinion is coming to introduce a halacha here. That I'm not sure if we had this halacha mentioned yet. 
um, it goes like this. Mashael b'baylam pater, Hashem shchinu v'Hashem mesachir b'baylam pater. I could have thought like this. There's a special, interesting halacha that when someone borrows an item, so he's responsible even for inus, even for unpreventable circumstance. But there's an exception to that. An exception is if when he borrows the item, he borrows the owner of the item with him, with it. So the let's say you borrow a lawnmower, and the guy says, "Yeah, I'll come and help you use it." So when he comes and helps, then you're exempt from the Inus. You're even understand. exempt from Gneva Aveda and possibly from Shia, the Gemara says. Even if negligence could be your exempt. That's it's a discussion because the owner's there. It says, by love, ain't imai, by love, imai. So if the owner's with you, then you become exempt. So if that's the case by a borrower, now if we would learn Shlichus Yad from a borrower, what would come out is like this. We would say that when someone uses an item, when, they, when he wasn't supposed to use it, for sure he's going to be obligated because if a borrower becomes obligated, even for unpreventable, for so this guy. Now, the only thing is that the borrower has a one exception to that, and that's if the owner is doing work together with him, then he's not responsible. So what, what would have come out is if someone, um, if a Shemir uh is watching an item and then he uses the item, so it would be Shlichus Yad, he should be high on everything, but I can't make him chayev if the owner was doing some sort of activity for the uh, person. It says, yeah, you watch my item, I'll bring you a cup of water. So you'd be exempt on the shlichus yad because the, the owner of the uh, of the item was, was together with, with him, was doing something for, for the watchman. You'd be exempt and shlichus yad won't work. So it's coming to tell me the second time it says shlichus yad, which is by the Shemr Sacha, come to tell me that we don't say the violent putter, that if the owner's there, you're going to be exempt, as we would say it by a shayel, by a borrower. One second, it's Rabin Levi. According to, to Levi, we understand why it says twice. One is to tell me that you don't, uh, it doesn't need to have a chesar, it doesn't need to have a loss. But according to Rav, why does he need to say it twice? So one of them is to tell me that second thing that we said that you don't, you're not exempt by shlichus yad if the owner was doing something together with you, which I would have thought you would be exempt because we're learning from a kalvachimer from Shail. Now the, the the expression over here in the Gemara is dial of and adin You can never get any higher than where you started. You can't get end up stricter than where you start. So if I'm learning shlichus yad from the shayel. I can never get any stricter than the shayel itself. But since the shayel itself is himself is potter, if the owner is doing work together with the borrower, so that's, that's what I would end up with the other case. So we say no, we're not going to say that over here. We're going to say that you're going to be chayev even if the owner is doing work with you. If you're a shemachinim, we're going to go higher than where we're starting from in the kalvachim, and that's why it has to say shlichus yad. You know, if it didn't say shlichus yad by the shemachinim. I would have ended up with a dial of Amin Adin, I would have ended up with uh, the, the cap the, is, would, would have been the way a shayel is chayev, which is the, not as chayev as the shemachinim that shaleach yad. That's why it has to repeat it. And then the next thing is, v'idach, the second time it says shlichus yad, look at the Tanya, it's taught in a b'raisa. It says, v'nikr balabayas alikim, the watchman comes to make a shvua, comes to bezdin le shvua. Balikim over here means to the Dayanim to take an oath, and that's when it's considered. Um, that's when he's going to have to pay double. When does he have to pay double if he claims If he claims claims got stolen, that's only after the oath. You only say it's after the oath. Maybe just if he comes to Bezdin, even if he doesn't take an oath, he claims it got stolen. Talking about Hashem he has to pay double. It says Shlichus Yad by the Shemir Sacher, that's below. It says Shlichus Yad above, that's by the Shemir Chinim. Mala Halan Lashvua, just like uh, above by the Shemir Chinim, was a Shvua, Afkan Lashvua. No. Mala Halan, Mala Halan means down below. Uh, what's the last words over there? Just like, yeah. Oh, so just like, um, yeah, just one second. 
just as the uh, the passage about the Shemesh Sachar, the Torah requires an oath that's talking about that a paid share must pay compensation uh, unless he takes an oath that the loss of, uh, the loss of the deposit was due to factors beyond his control. He has to take an oath, just like by the Shemesh Sachar, he has to take an oath that it wasn't um, that it was that he has to take an oath that it was um, an Ines. So too by the Shemesh Chinam, he has to take an oath. Um, before he's going to be high of Kefel, double payment, when, when he claims that it's stolen. Okay. So we learned that from it's, the Shlichus Yad twice. Okay. Have a good day. Have a good day. Chodesh Tov, everyone. Mazel Tov to Hillel.